Hey, Dave. I need a shower. <laughs> okay, so at, uh, at 7 a.m., Mary's husband gave us the weather report and said that it was not going to rain. No, she, he said it was going to rain. We said, no, nah, it's not going to rain. Let's hurry up and get through this. Um, thanks for being down at the docks, if you were. Thanks for following us up here. Thanks for being here right now. The continued sustained drumbeat of we're trying to make things move here in the downtown. And here today we stand before a building that has <clears throat> over two, two decades probably of rocky starts, fault starts, uh, and no starts on getting something underway, whether that something was demolition or an actual rehabilitation. And, you know, I've even heard folks in town say, I'll die before that place is rehabilitated. Well, folks, here we are. So hang in there with us for a couple of years because it's underway. Uh, you see a sign right over there that says June 1st, things started here. But it all started behind this closed up window and the closed doors, and it was the rehabilitation and remediation largely facilitated by two things, uh, a city commitment to this project and a community investment fund 2030 grant that we received from the Department of Economic and Community Development. So we'll cycle through some speakers here and I'll introduce them and their part and their role in this thing that I call a team sport. Uh, which is community development. But the bottom line is you are going to see 25,000 square feet of currently blighted space become lighted space right here in the center of our downtown. We're very excited about that. That's right, that's right. And it's your neighbor, right? And, and as the mayor said when speaking about the Dwyers down at the, the docks a little bit ago, it's hard to get there if you don't have a private partner who's willing to assume a little bit of risk count on the municipality to be a good partner and step up and actually take on the project. And our partner here at this project, uh, we're very proud and excited to have him alongside us, is David McCarthy from Heritage Properties. David? Thank you, Kevin. Can everybody hear me all right? Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today to celebrate the beginning of the renovations of the Reed and Hughes building. I'm David McCarthy, and I'm the president of Heritage Housing, Inc. We are a Connecticut-based developer of affordable and mixed-income housing. While we've completed projects in several states, we always prefer to work right here in Connecticut where we can impact the communities that we call home. We first became involved in Norwich, which I purchased of the Warrigan across the street, um, in December of 2020 from its original developer. Um, at the time, the owner of the Reed and Hughes building was entering bankruptcy. And so our phone started ringing off the hook with calls about whether we'd take a look at the building. It seemed like a very challenging project. The building appeared to be barely standing, and walking through it reminded me of YouTube videos of visits to the Chernobyl containment zone. <laughs> <laughs> so naturally, we have said, of course. <laughs> As we got more involved with Reed and Hughes and eventually committed to working with its former lenders, um, which included LISP, the City of Norwich, uh, CT Preservation Trust, and Capital for Change. Um, we restructured the financing, um, and what has kept us going is the amazing support we've received from the City of Norwich and from Capital for Change in particular. These two groups in particular have stuck with this project for years of turmoil and disappointment. I'm so grateful that we're finally able to celebrate today with their continued financial support in the form of a construction to permanent loan from Capital for Change, which is a, a Connecticut-based CDFI, and a $600,000 loan from the city of Norwich. We're also grateful to receive a $500,000 grant from the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development, along with approvals for state and federal historic tax credits and the purchase of the state historic credits by CT Preservation Trust and Eversource. The Reed and Hughes building is an amazing piece of Norwich history that we're excited to transform into 17 units of housing and approximately 2,000 square feet of retail. The building was first constructed in 1869 and was later expanded and renovated in 1898. It served as the home of a department store that remained open for over 100 years until it closed in 1987. Now just 
some of us believe that 1987 was like yesterday, but just to put that in context, I was four years old when that built, <laughs> when this building became vacant. So it's sat here for a long time. Um, but we are going to complete the renovations in accordance with the State Historic Preservation Office and the U.S. Department of the Interior Standards for Historic Preservation. We hope that the renovated building will restore the beauty of the original construction while also providing exceptional living and retail spaces for its future tenants. We expect the renovations to be completed in the spring of 2025. I thank you all for attending the celebration. We appreciate the opportunity to be part of rebuilding downtown Norwich, and I hope that we'll be able to participate again in the future. We have been so fortunate to work with outstanding and committed people in the city of Norwich, including Mayor Peter Nystrom, City Manager John Salomon, and come on, Mayor, up there he is, um, NCDC Director Kevin Brown, uh, Planning and Neighborhood Services Director Deanna Rose, and, yep, and uh, City Building Official Dan Coley. Um, without the support of these individuals, the project never would have happened. So thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, we look forward to getting started on the work. Thanks, David. Uh, as you've come accustomed to know, we've talked private, state, and municipal. So at this time, I'd like to turn it to uh, an acknowledgement of our state officials who've helped us along the way. It was a summer festival day down in the Bath Street parking lot. We were, I think it was a Peruvian festival, and I bumped into Senator Kathy Austin, <clears throat> and I thought I was back in the Army because Senator Austin looked me deep into my soul and said, hey, it's great that you're chasing all these grants. Are you going to actually get any of that money out the door? And I said, yes, I am. And then I started scrambling. And uh, this is one of those examples of us, uh, you know, benefiting from the tenacity of Senator Austin, who helps us by championing for this great city and getting the funds here leaving it to us to then actually do the work and get it out the door. And the good news is, across the landscape of all Community Investment Fund 2030 projects, with caveat, there are 75 awarded projects across the state right now. Only three have actually put money out the door, and this is one of them. The work that's done inside, you can't go in. I know Dan Coley's not here, so we could probably sneak in. <laughs> The building official does not want us standing on that floor. You don't, David doesn't want us standing on that floor. You don't want to stand on that floor. But as you look in there and you see the work that has been completed to prepare this for the eventual build out of those 17 market rate apartments, it's because of the tenacity and support of, of Kathy Austin to get us here. And we greatly appreciate her, uh, Senator Austin. Thank you. So again, good morning, everybody. And the rain has actually stopped while we're having this um, ceremony and quasi groundbreaking. Uh, I look on my role in all of this is to bring back the resources, but I want those resources spent. I want to be the city that gets resources in from the state and then immediately spends the dollars so that we can complete projects. I look forward, I, however, was not poor in 1987, and I remember downtown Norwich uh, when we had Beverly's Tea Room, when we were down here after school from uh, Norwich Free Academy, which I graduated from in 1973, which indicates that I was a lot older in 1987. <laughs> So I, I want to see this to be a thriving community, a thriving community that brings everybody out at night, that we're walking around, and that we're enjoying downtown. That's what this is all about, and we are a community that can do that. That is so important, and we can only do it if we bring money in and then it automatically goes out and it starts those projects. So uh, when we talked a little bit ago about uh, fixing the docks down there. We did that. Now we're doing this. There are a number of other projects that are happening around the city of Norwich, in particular in downtown. And I can tell you that I and my colleagues up in Hartford are not going to stop until Norwich is able to completely rebuild its downtown areas and respect the system. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy, and thanks for. <coughs> Giving us more to do. <laughs>
so next up, I'd like to uh, acknowledge, recognize, and provide some time at the podium to our to our friends from the state of Connecticut. And uh, and I'll bring up the Deputy Commissioner of DECD, Matt Puglisi, here in a second. But I also just want to acknowledge that he's accompanied by members of the Office of Brownfield Remediation and Development. Those teammates are here somewhere in the audience. There they are. Uh, Benu Shandy, who couldn't be here. Uh, Shay Sabir, who is with us, and her new colleague, I'm sorry, your name? James. James Parsley. Parsley. Uh, as well as Gregory Ambrose from the office as well. Th these are the folks that help us execute and get the funds out the door and, and keep the work going, so we appreciate that. Quick story in the rain um, about Matt and CIF. You, none of you would care to know this or need to know this, but <clears throat> the Community Investment Fund 2030 was born, at least in our, in our, on our side, on or about May or June of 2022. And and it was a single family unit and Matt was the only guy standing. It was, it, Matt Puglisi was CIF all all by himself. And meanwhile, on the, on the customer side or on the municipality side, Scott Lassard and I were staring at this thing called the Community Investment Fund 2030 Grant Program saying, I wonder what this is and should we get involved? And at the end of the day, this project, Lots of partners, lots of investments, but on the on the fun side of this, I, I will never forget or I'll always remember this project as being me, Scott, and Matt communicating about what is this CIF, what do we have to do, how do we get this application turned in, and then sh shipping it off to Matt and his team. And here we are. I mean, that's the, that's the end of this story. The good news is it worked. This young man spent what I jokingly call a study hall Friday afternoon jamming on a grant. We turned it into this gentleman here who really didn't have a staff and had to review it, and we got awarded this money to give us the impetus to get this building to change. Uh, and so, Matt, we are grateful to DECD and your teammates for what you do, and at this time, I'd like to invite you to the program. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Governor Lamont, uh, on behalf of Commissioner O'Keefe and uh, Speaker Ritter and uh, Senator Looney, the Community Investment Fund uh, Board co-chairs. Uh, these round one projects, as you know, as Kevin set up, really important to me. Um, it was a, a lot of work to launch the Community Investment Fund. There's a lot of people, though, besides me that were involved in this. We have an amazing team at DCD. But the amount of time that all of the elected uh, and appointed board members have put in and all of the other departments across DCD, uh, across DEEP, uh, OPM, the other agencies in the state that want to make sure that we are reinvesting in our communities and creating the vibrancy in downtown. I think it's really important beyond just community investment fund making this happen. There's so many parts of DCD that are bringing funding to bear on this project. And it's for exactly the reasons that Senator Austin talked about, that Kevin have talked about. We are in a historic downtown that is made so unique by all of the different architecture that we have here preserved. And it's really inspiring that we're going to be able to continue to see this historic building be part of this downtown neighborhood the way it is. And that's because of the state and federal historic tax credits that SHPO is bringing in. And now the rain is telling me to hurry up and speak faster. <laughs> Cleaning up and putting blighted and um, polluted properties back into productive use is what our Brownfields program is for. And so thank you to Banu and to Shay and our Brownfield staff for their funding. At the end of the day though, DCD and the Community Investment Fund, uh, this unique partnership is so far in four rounds, put out $325 million into nearly 100 projects now. And yes, this is one of the few that are spending money and that is uh, magic uh, for us. Senator, make sure you keep spreading that word. Norwich is spending dollars. We want shovel-ready projects because these projects aren't for us up here. They're for everybody out there. We want these projects to happen for the community. So we're proud to be part of this. Can't wait to be back here with everybody for the ribbon cutting. Thank you. Okay, Deanna was kind enough to forego her remarks. I'm gonna say it for her. This is a team effort. You see the, you see the little cabal of coyotes, the, the zoning enforcement officer, the building official, Deanna, Dan Daniska, the fire chief, Uncas Health, roaming around the city. 
making these projects come to light because they make sure that they're done right. And NPU, who turned the lights on yesterday here so we could be here and do this thing. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to close by letting the mayor say a few words before we do our, our sledgehammering. It's not really groundbreaking here. We've got a sidewalk and a building, so uh, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> thank you, Kevin. Uh, I want to thank you, Kevin. I know that's been said enough today or other days, but really you've been a catalyst for us and so many projects, and I look forward to more future opportunities like this. David uh, talked to you about his phone ringing off the hook. It was about a week or two after he assumed control of Regan Hotel, my phone rang. He was on the line introducing himself, and he said, what can you tell me about the read and use, and how can we improve it and restore it right away? That takes vision, and that takes someone willing to accept risk for some communities. He has done that. He could have been satisfied staying across the street, but he wasn't. He saw an opportunity here as well. So I gotta thank you from the bottom of my heart because a lot of developers today don't look for that other opportunity, but you did as soon as you got here. So we owe you a great debt and let's go rock some rocks or whatever we're doing with that sledge. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll close real quickly and just you know uh, reiterate the theme from down at the docks where, where we all told ourselves uh, we are being very tenacious. Um, we're standing here at a singular project, and it's an important one. But all up and down this main street, you see construction signs and activity and things going on. And when you consider what it means to re-envision or re-imagine this downtown, right in the face of this project that's now underway is that park right over there. That small downtown pocket park. Just imagine for a minute the people that are beginning to live in these apartments up and down Main Street having access to something that's comfortable and inviting in our downtown. That's where we're going next. Keep that in mind, all of you in the audience who might be chased by us for money. Uh, look, we're doing it, folks. That's that's the bottom line of this story, and, and this is just another great step forward in doing it. Um, we're now going to do the thing. The, the, I don't know. We're not really going to switch. This is a prop. I want Matt. I want Matt to be able to hold a sledgehammer in a picture to take back to Hartford. But we're not really going to break anything. All we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a quick unveil over here of the image of what this is going to become. So if I could get David, Matt, Matthew, come on over here. Hopefully this works. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, we tried to keep that as much as we could. We're done. Uh, again, in all seriousness, the building official would prefer that we do not enter the building. However, we've opened both those doors so folks can wander by, take a picture inside, see that there is progress, and be proud of what we're doing here in downtown. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome to go back over to James and grab a donut. <laughs> Thank you.